Hello everyone. Uh, this presentation is about the vehicle modeling and implementation of the torque vectoring stability controller for simulation purposes. I'm going to start by brief introduction about the stability controllers and different types of them. Then I will walk you through the steps of modeling and simulation of the vehicle model enhanced with the torque vectoring controller using MapleSim. And at the end, I will finish up by showing an analysis tool, which was created based on this model and then showing you some results generated with that. So as of 2012, uh, the North Am in North America, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration requires all new passenger vehicles sold in US to be equipped with the electronic stability controllers. That also means uh, or amplifies the importance of the vehicle stability controllers in area of vehicle safety. But these controllers involve so many interacting factors, which are difficult to model. Therefore, automotive manufacturers are looking for tools to help study stability earlier in the design um, process. So some manufacturers implement the stability systems which are integrating the ABS brake modules and in event of any instability, the existing torque at each corner is reduced by applying the brake force to that wheel or that corner of the vehicle. However, one of the drawbacks of such a controller is the reduction in the vehicle speed. But torque vectoring systems can get power to any wheel instantly without having to use the brakes or cutting the power of the um, vehicle. Now let's take a look at two of these controllers side by side. So on the left we have the vehicle with independent wheel braking controller and on the right vehicle enhanced with the torque vectoring controller. While these vehicles are uh, driven on the straight path the controllers act normal um, and both vehicles perform the same and there isn't any um, any correction required by the controllers but while these vehicles follow the curved path the controllers try to keep vehicles on the desired paths on the left the independent wheel braking system reduces the driving torque transferred to the wheels and applies the brake force to either inner or outer wheel for under steer or over steer conditions. However, on the right, the torque vectoring system doesn't decrease the magnitude of the driving torque and it only changes the ratio between left and right. A quick review over the available torque vectoring controllers shows that different algorithms and hardware setups were employed by different manufacturers. Some of them only changed the left to right ratio of the rear axle, while the front to rear ratio was also considered in the others. This project was divided into following steps, building a vehicle model, adding a controller to it, and creating an easy to use tool for analysis purpose. In this slide, you can see schematic diagram of the vehicle grouping different subsystems like chassis, suspension, and wheels. The Maple Sim libraries were used in this model are multi-body, 1D mechanical, tire, and signal blocks. Now let's take a look at inside the chassis subsystem. On the right side of your screen, you can see the Maple Sim 2D environment. So a rigid body was dragging into the environment to represent vehicle CG mass. And three rigid body frames to uh, represent the vertical and longitudinal translations from center of gravity points to the front and rear axles and four extra uh, rigid body frames to account for the lateral translation from midpoints to the left and right wheels. 
Then by adding some sensors to capture the vehicle states such as the speed, acceleration and position, we can get the required information or signals for the controller. And also we can look at the vehicle performance and its trajectory. All parameters associated to the, this model are defined symbolically and listed in these two parameter blocks. On the left, the parameter block contains the stability controller parameters, and on the right block, there is the vehicle body geometries and other data. Here you can define the parameter names, associated uh, types or units, and then some default values which can be changed in your model in addition to the descriptions of each parameter. In torque distribution subsystems, for reference vehicle which produces the reference signals for our controller, we set the total requested torque to be divided equally between all four wheels. For the actual vehicle, which is enhanced with torque vectoring controller, and the purpose of controller is to uh, adjust for any error between reference vehicle and the actual vehicle, the front to rear ratio is kept fixed, as you can see, uh, with 50%, 50 percent, 50-50 to the front and rear. But the left and right ratio is calculated with the PID controller based on the vehicle ER8 error, as I just mentioned before. So the reference vehicle is going to be assumed uh, driven on the perfect dry road, while the condition under the uh, actual vehicle with uh, torque vectoring controller might be changed. For example, it can be driven on the slippery road which has the less uh, friction of coefficients between its tire and the ground surface. Now we put two of these vehicle models side by side, one of them with the uh, reference vehicle controller and the other one with the actual vehicle controller. We call the left one the reference vehicle and the right one vehicle with controller. So both models will reflect all dynamics of the vehicle chassis, just, uh, including the suspensions and tires. And the same requested torque, like a driver's requested torque, and the steering wheel angle is going to be sent to both models. So after some adjustment to the PID gains, we can compare the vehicle responses by turning the controller on and off. As you can see in this slide, the reference vehicles are in both uh, videos shown with the red color and the pads, uh, the red pads means it's a reference pad. On the left with the controller off, the green vehicle starts to deviate from the reference pad. But on the right, when the controller is on, the vehicle starts to adjust for the error or reduce the error in the yaw rates between both two vehicles. And then at some point, it's getting closer to the reference path. When the modeling in MapleSim is completed, we can link that model to Maple worksheets. As you can see in this slide, I'm going to open up that worksheet associated to this model. And in this worksheet, we can uh, perform any further analysis, such as uh, start playing with the parameters, and it can be completed or accomplished by having some embedded components available in Maple environments. So we can create or design our analysis tool. In this worksheet, the embedded buttons shown with the red ellipses executes the 
maple based comments when they are clicked by the user and the boxes uh, surrendered by the purple rectangulars are accepting the numbers which can be substituted with the current parameters of the model and then the user can also set the simulation time and get the results for that certain set of parameters now we are demonstrating two different stability scenarios first we select the standard double lane change scenario and run the model with high friction coefficients between tires and ground contact as you can see the vehicle with controller on follows the reference path and the other one deviates while changing the friction coefficients to the lower number even the vehicle with the controller off deviates more from the reference path now changing the scenario to full steps uh, steering angle and first running for the dry path we can see the deviation between vehicle with controller on and the vehicle with controller off and simply decreasing the coefficients of frictions even adds to that deviation for the vehicle without the controller So to just summarize this presentation, we have covered the quick introduction to torque vectoring controllers, how to model the vehicle enhanced with such a controller in MapleSIM, and the way of creating an easy to use interface for your model. In addition to what was demonstrated, MapleSIM was uh, containing many other features which couldn't be fitted in this presentation. Ability to generate an optimized fast code from your model, which can be tested in other third party environments or for any hardware in the loop uh, simulation, was one of these features. Thank you.